Potato Marketing Board's 1985 national demonstration was held at Skipton on Swale in Yorkshire in early September. The dismal weather of that 1985 summer relented for the two days of the event, so that although the underlying soil was still wet and cloddy, the going was a lot better than anyone could have hoped for just a few days before the demonstration started. For Standards, the event was most important because it was the first opportunity for the company to show growers the new range of Standon Bulmers harvesters and to launch the new scimitar TF. The show itself featured no less than 37 harvesters, these being sold by 14 companies. Farmers who managed to look at every harvester would have covered several miles that day and seen the best Europe could offer. These farmers would also have been treated to displays of ancillary equipment such as grading lines, handling systems and storage methods. With each load of harvested potatoes being identified by a plot number, growers could compare the results of each harvester's work. The flow of potatoes from the field could scarcely keep pace with the grading line's demands, such as the number of companies exhibiting. Standons are, of course, well known for their beet harvesting range of equipment, and it must have come as a surprise to farmers to find that their stand was full of potato equipment, with not a beet harvester in sight. In particular, the range of Standon Eho potato planters attracted a lot of attention. Introduced by Standons in 1984, already many growers have benefited from the Eho's gentle accuracy in setting potatoes. New for the demonstration was the little 120S, a semi-automatic low-price planter which is especially suitable for cut seed. The 2-row 242S with fertilizer attachment and belt feed is ideal for chitted seed, whilst the big 4-row planter is designed for the large acreage grower. But pride of place on the stand, and more importantly in the field, went to the new stand and potato harvesters. In this film we will examine each in turn, firstly at the demonstration, and then to illustrate points in more detail, we will look at machines on the farm. Let's start with the two-row unmanned statesman, which is manufactured by Standards at Ely, the first 50 machines being produced in 1985. On this D-stone site, the statesman is working on the right conditions for this type of harvester. Even with a good forward speed, the statesman is producing a sample which is as good as the best on the site. Before we look at the statesman in detail, let's take our cameras into the Standon factory to see where it is made. The factory at Ely covers a five-acre site and has been manufacturing root harvesters for a rover 30 years. Of course, most farmers associate the Standon name with sugar beet harvesters, and since over 20,000 have been made here, this is not at all surprising. Now, however, we expect there to be an increasing association between the Standon name and that of the Standon Bulmus potato harvester. The modern Ely facilities, which includes some of the most up-to-date equipment, such as this computer-aided design system, can produce machinery to meet the exacting standards of the best in Europe. Here we see part of the first batch of 50 statesmen being assembled. The majority of these machines were in fact exported to France, Holland and Germany. So what makes a statesman so acceptable to these markets? It's a fast worker, well able to harvest seven or eight acres a day, more in well-prepared D-stone land, and is strong enough to take such acreages in its stride year in, year out. A 90 horsepower tractor is well matched for power. The generously proportioned lifting area with its two diabolo rollers, adjustable discs and three-piece share feed the two rows of potatoes onto the main web. Rows of between 28 and 36 inches can be harvested. The main web sorts out most of the soil, small stone and clod, and is fitted with two adjustable agitators. Two sets of clod breaking fingers are available, should conditions warrant them. Two rollers extract the majority of the horn, the weighted guide fingers on the top roller helping to separate the horn from the flow of crop. The two webs which follow the main web provide further separation and feed the crop to the trash extractor system. The second of these two webs is rubber covered. Returning now to the demo, the effectiveness of the extraction system is clearly demonstrated by the material flowing over the back of the harvester and more importantly, the cleanliness of the sample in the trailer. There are a lot of two-row unmanned harvesters to choose from on the UK market and growers may have difficulty in making a choice. But if results are important, the statesman takes a lot of beating. Leaving the two-row plots, let's turn our attention to the two stand-on single-row harvesters, the Sabre and the Scimitar TF. 
Both are of similar concept, the Sabre being the smaller machine. But don't let that make you think it has a small output. Many Sabre owners have harvested in excess of three acres a day. At the demo, a bunker model was used, but a bagging model and elevator model are also available. We will start by examining a bagging platform machine at work in Lincolnshire on a crop of earlies. Here we are on David Young's farm near Friskney in a crop of Ulster prints. As the sabre moves towards us, we can see that the tractor's wheel is well away from the unlifted crop. Furthermore, because the sabre has true offset lifting, its own wheel runs in the bottom of the lifted row, not in the crop. Depth control for the floating diabolo roller is easily set by the adjuster seen in the top of the picture. The roller itself is clearly visible from the tractor cab, which makes driving that much easier. The sabre can lift potatoes in row centres planted at between 26 and 36 inches. A generous 2.2 square metres of main web area ensures excellent primary separation under all conditions. Having passed up the main web, the crop reaches the through-flow horn separation system, which is a major feature of both the sabre and the scimitar. As the pictures show, the potatoes are allowed to pass through the horn web, which is of large open mesh design. This through-flown system does away with the need for a cage wheel or elevator, and the damage and blockage that can be experienced with such systems. The horn is then taken up the elevator, where it passes under three banks of rubber fingers, which separate any potatoes still clinging to the green top. These potatoes slide down a rubber sheet to return to the secondary separating area. The horn that falls onto the ground, even in conditions like these, is completely free of potatoes. The secondary separating area features a rubber pintle belt, which passes under two sets of pendulum finger banks. These deflect potatoes onto the picking off table, whilst allowing clods and stones and so forth to pass out of the harvester. The effectiveness of this system is clearly demonstrated in this piece of film. The reject material is discharged from the side of the harvester, lessening the amount of work necessary on the picking off table. Such is the efficiency of the mechanical separation that only two or three pickers are required to produce a really first-class sample. <laughs> For the bagging operators, the huge platform is a real plus. Not only can two one-ton pallets be carried on the saver, but there is still plenty of room to work in comfort. The pneumatic weigher can handle up to 400 sacks an hour. Unloading the pallets with a forklift ensures that time spent out of the crop is kept to an absolute minimum, so that during an average working day, well over 30 tons of bagged potatoes can be produced. Before we leave Mr Young's farm, let's hear what he says about the saver in conversation with our potato project manager. David, you've had the machine on your farm for a day now, um, the new Sabre TF. We're working in quite a, an early crop with a reasonable amount of top. How do you find the through front water separator work? Well, excellent. You can't say any other. Well, you can't say better than that. No, I mean, it does just take it straight out the back. Oh, we true. haven't had any problems at all. Any problem with losses at, with, at the back of the machine? No. no, that is what we have been in front walking behind. They were only picking up half a dozen pills through a row. It just wasn't worth having any more. Now, early crops, obviously, damage is a very important factor, and we're really stressing with the machine being offset and having less damage through less elevators on there. How do you find, in practice, that work? Well, it seems to work. Yes, I mean, the potatoes aren't travelling too far. We haven't, you know, we've had them into the market now. We've had no cutback. They seem to be fine. So we keep your suppliers happy, then, you know. At the moment, we've heard nothing, you know, which, I mean, if you hear nothing, that means things are all right. Good. As already mentioned, the Sabre can be fitted with an elevator. Here, we see a Sabre lift a crop of Carlton daffodils near Boston during a private demonstration, the grower subsequently buying the harvester as it exactly met his requirements. We can finish on the Sabre by returning to Skipton on Swale to look at the bunker model. The big two-ton bunker matches the high output of the harvester and features a high lift facility to allow it to clear the highest tractor cabs. His rolling floor soon discharges the load, the discharge chute ensuring no damage occurs during the operation. The purpose of attending a demonstration is basically to sell, and no one knows this better than Bob Baxter, Standon's retired but still active sales director. Here we see him accosting, sorry, inviting a prospective customer to look over the new Standon harvesters. Eagerly he points out the major sales features and invites his prospect to accompany him to the platform. She seems pleased with the machine, as she has every right to be, 
as this new harvester is the first high-capacity fully offset harvester on the UK market. But back to the field. Watching the new scimitar pass under our camera, we can clearly see the general layout of the harvester. Its true offset design is clearly shown, as is the generous platform area, which can be enlarged still further when banging off. The high output of the scimitar is unrestricted by bottlenecks, and four pickers are all that are required to produce a first-class sample. But for more detail, let's look at a scimitar working on a second early crop in Cambridgeshire. The new scimitar TF was introduced for the 1985 harvest and shares with the Sabre the unique combination of true offset lifting and through flow horn separation. But it is a much larger machine than the Sabre, with over five acres a day capacity. With the tractor wheels running well away from the crop, compaction damage is eliminated. The scimitar's very full specification includes the standard equipment, horn intake rollers, three-piece share, and 750 millimeter wide main web, with no less than three square meters of separating area. The spring-loaded disc can lift, to allow stones to pass underneath them without the depth of work being affected. The main web is available in pitches of 32, 36, 40, 45 and 50 millimetres. Where smaller pitches are required, a neoprene cover kit is available. To handle the higher throughput of crop, a large capacity through flow horn separating system is used, seen here sorting out the burnt off top. The crop is then conveyed by pintle belt to the clodden stone separating area where three sets of reciprocating rubber fingers divert potatoes onto the main section of the picking off table. Clod and stone are either allowed to pass under the fingers to be dropped back to the ground or are fed onto the reject section of the picking off web. To reinforce the high capacity theme, the scimitar features a reverse running pintle belt. This is hydraulically driven, with both its speed and angle being adjustable from the picking area. The effectiveness of the separating system can clearly be seen as stones and clods are fed by the reject web to the ground. The main picking off web is also hydraulically driven and can be adjusted for speed on a simple dial from the picking area. Under extreme conditions, as many as six pickers can be accommodated at the picking off table. The scimitar is seen in this film fitted with an elevator, but like the sabre it is also available with a bagging platform or with a big three ton self unloading bunker. The bagging model can be quickly converted to either the direct elevator or bunker specification. Again, as with the Sabre, the scimitar has a very low centre of gravity, and with the two wheels being set well back, excellent weight transfer is achieved. These two factors, plus of course offset lifting, which allows the use of the widest tyres, permits harvesting to take place under the most arduous conditions. Before returning to the PMB demo, a few other features can be quickly noted. An in-cab electro-hydraulic control system puts the driver in full command of the harvester operation. From his cab he can adjust the height of the elevator and also engage and disengage the drive. He can steer his rear axle and also adjust the drawbar. The lifting mechanism can be raised and lowered and he can also stop and start the picking off web. So back to the PMB demo and a reminder that this new harvester is designed for the grower who is looking for a higher output single row harvester and wants the unique combination of design features which are part and parcel of the scimitar's specification. And so, the two-day demonstration draws to a close. The standard machines have finished their plots early and are asked by the PMB staff to finish plots where the harvesting has fallen a little behind. Here the sabre eases into the crop, lines herself up and starts work again revelling in the sandier conditions found in this part of the field. As evening draws on, the last potatoes come out of the ground, and the demonstration site empties of visitors and machines. The operators can relax and start packing up. It will be three years before the harvesters all meet again. One thing is certain, standards will be there in force, proving again that their range of machines is second to none. <laughs>